frightening, isn't it? Brave new world and all that. For those of us brought up on Jonathan John and the seven times table, the modern classroom can seem a strange, even threatening place. Now, we want to do the best for our children, to do our bit, to help them get on. But somebody has moved the goalposts. We never did anything like this. The nearest I ever got to technology was the metalwork class. But this is a new era, the age of information. There's no field of work untouched by the microchip revolution. Processing information, interpreting information, communicating information. The future will be built on these skills, on brain, not brawn. And if young people like Vicky here are to survive in the competitive workplace of the future, they must be able to understand and exploit the power of information technology. But that's just the beginning of the story. Computer literacy isn't an end in itself. The classroom computer functions as a rather special key designed to unlock children's creativity, to develop their competence and their imagination, whatever the subject. Science and technology, arts and music, traditionally paper-based studies such as English, geography and modern languages, all now spring to a new life in the classroom. This innovative use of computers in schools is a world away from the dry, number-crunching machines found in most offices. Until you've seen it for yourself, it's difficult to appreciate the energy and excitement that spills from the computer screen and the creativity this inspires in children. It brings a new dimension to their studies, enriching the learning experience and enhancing the quality of the finished piece of work. The learning environment becomes one that enthralls and empowers rather than judges or intimidates. This video has been put together by the Sunday Times and Acorn Computers, the leading supplier of computers to schools. It's designed to give you an insight into the vital part played by information technology, IT, in your child's development. We'll be showing you some of the uses of IT in primary and secondary education through a number of real projects. Now, if you're pushed for time, by all means watch only the sections appropriate to your family. But do please watch the final summary, because it's got some important ideas on how you can support your child's development and forge a link between class projects and studies at home. The national curriculum under which pupils study a combination of ten subjects maps out their development through key stages, each with a range of ability levels. But where does information technology fit into all of this? And for that matter, what exactly is information technology? Many parents wonder if IT is an entirely new subject. Well, of course, it isn't. It's more a new set of skills to be developed and applied to the existing subjects. These skills have been divided into five strands. The first strand is communication, the ability to refine and present ideas and information. This can range from simple word processing to a sophisticated multimedia presentation, combining text, graphics, sound and video. Next comes data handling, developing skills to understand, analyze, interpret and draw conclusions from data, whether it's a simple record of rainfall or the result of a complex scientific experiment. Strand number three is modelling. From a very young age, children use Play-Doh and empty cereal packets to build models. IT taps and develops these same skills of imagination and hypothesis, as the model making moves far beyond the cereal packets to graphical three-dimensional models of objects, and then on to sophisticated business models using spreadsheets. The skills of measurement and control using information technology go way beyond those of the traditional methods of measuring. Children develop the skills to control their environment. This can involve anything from measuring and controlling remote devices such as model cars or robots to running the school security system. The last but arguably the most important strand application and effects, develops the skills to understand when and how the use of IT is appropriate and effective. It also nurtures an understanding of the impact of information technology on the world around us, from the use of simple databases to complex banking operations. 
These vital skills are developed alongside more traditional ones, and children routinely use them as part of the daily curriculum. In the projects that follow, you'll see that information technology is accepted as an integral part of the curriculum structure, and computers considered a vital learning resource. In primary schools, many of the traditional skills are taught within the framework of a class project. So too is the awareness and use of information technology. After a visit to a local chocolate manufacturer, children from this Warwick school developed a technology theme in their class project. They decided to produce their own chocolates and market them within the school. Using their information technology skills, they designed a marketing survey analyzing and interpreting preferences and presented the survey data and results. They calculated and controlled costs and produced pricing models. Then they used IT to design promotional materials, posters and packaging. The project lasted many weeks and covered a wide range of subjects, including technology, geography, history, science and English. The project reflects the way many professional products are designed and marketed. The only difference is that at Warwick School, they did all this as part of normal curriculum activities, using a network of powerful computers, the Acorn Archimedes series. Today's computers are compact and very powerful. All the clout of a classroom computer can now be packed into a small portable system, enabling it to meet education needs which are even more demanding than normal business practice. In my day, field trips meant clipboards and soggy questionnaires. Here, during a trip to the Bovington Tank Museum, students record information with portable pocketbook computers and image capture ion cameras. Back at base, using the standard desktop computer, they can edit and refine the material and combine it with digitized photographs and research information from a CD-ROM to create a multimedia presentation. The data can then be compiled into their own project folders, adding an extra dimension in terms of creativity and presentation of work. A real step up from the traditional paper-based approach. In all areas of the curriculum, ACORN systems enable technology to focus and enhance the normal learning process. Their equipment has the most advanced power to release the creativity of all pupils. Computers designed especially for education play their essential part in the learning process. From the very earliest age, children become familiar with computers, which hold no mystique for them. The use of IT is just another set of skills in their repertoire. Should we change the colour? What used to be the isolated subject of computer studies has now been transformed into the information technology strands. These have been recognised as a valuable set of skills to be developed and applied through the entire curriculum across all abilities and age groups. IT skills are no less vital than the ability to read and write. Young people use powerful systems daily. Every school in the country provides access to computers. The techno fear suffered by many of their parents is unknown to this generation. <laughs> Modeling and simulations can go far beyond computer games. Real life situations are used to introduce a learning scenario, as here at the Super Choice Active IT Center at Osmington Bay in Dorset. It was just after three o'clock this morning, about three miles out to sea beyond that headland, that the tanker Magdalena B hit the notorious Calgaric rocks. And so far, about half her cargo of 80,000 tons of crude oil has spewed out into this beautiful bay. Environmental experts predict that this could be the worst oil spillage ever in UK waters. Well, luckily, that wasn't a real news story. But what if it had been? How would the authorities have coped? How would they have pulled together all the necessary information to assess the extent of the spillage, to keep the public well informed, and to prevent it ever happening again? Well, that's the kind of problem set by Project IT. Pupils work in a newsroom situation to compile their own newspapers and environmental reports on the pending disaster. It's all action from the moment they receive the first simulated news flash. Beach experiments for comparative studies of projects are undertaken as part of the students' research, 
and the remote use of portable computers allows instant assessments to be made. Each team of students works to deadlines to produce properly researched articles which examine the full effects of the simulated disaster. They have access to the full range of IT equipment, including satellite imaging, CD-ROM, scanners, logit sensors and portable computers. The project uses information technology to span all the curriculum subjects, geography, history, English, science, maths, modern languages and technology. The final project file can be used to provide the all-important evidence of attainment. The traditional view of a history project involves long hours of research in dusty libraries, reading and rewriting text, and just occasionally being able to copy a picture or a map. Nowadays, thanks to IT, information and resources can be drawn from scanned images, photographs from ion cameras, images created on screen or taken from CD-ROM, and this wealth of data and images can then be combined to produce multimedia presentations and files. In Austria, a small town called Rono am Inn. At Itchen College in Southampton, staff and pupils have worked together to compile a history project on the rise of the Nazi party. They were given access to original film footage of Hitler speaking at the Nuremberg rallies. And using multimedia, the project was given an extra dimension by footage from the Imperial War Museum. The power of the computer enabled them to edit the film and run it in slow motion, thus allowing pupils to place Hitler under the microscope to study his persona, his mannerisms and his powers of oratory, and so attempt a psychological analysis of an evil genius. None of this would have been possible for students prior to the age of IT. Now subjects are brought to life as pupils develop and use information technology skills as part of their everyday curriculum activities. You've seen a few examples of what is possible today and almost nine out of every ten schools have chosen Acorn computers for their power and versatility. We've seen examples of this from the familiar word processing, spreadsheet and database packages to the use of desktop publishing, multimedia and video manipulation. Now these are technologies that are widespread in schools but are only just beginning to be used by the most advanced commercial companies. And augmented with the power of technologies like CD-ROM, computers become an invaluable information resource. Bridging the gap between computers in education and the real world has been difficult until now. Today's pupils are achieving a practical understanding of today's technology. But all the projects we've seen illustrate how IT capability must be gained through real-world examples. We've seen how information technology can enhance communication skills. Pupils handle and interpret data with ease. The ability to model situations, either mathematically or in real-life scenarios, enables pupils to develop skills of prediction and analysis, while the ability to measure causes and effects and to control their own environment can only enrich the other skills. And of course, the student must appreciate when information technology is appropriate and what effects IT has on any situation. This vital fifth strand of IT under the national curriculum ensures that computers are never used just because they're there. Pupils learn to assess the implications and effects of the new information technology era on all our lives. It would be hard to exaggerate the importance of IT in education. It enhances young people's learning, it encourages and stimulates them, unlocks their creativity, and helps maximize their potential at all levels. Hands-on experience is the only fail-safe preparation for the technologically rich environment that lies beyond the school gates. Constant access to a computer is the best way to provide that experience. Acorn have created computer solutions to help parents help their children. And with prices starting from just £399, it could be an invaluable investment in your child's future.